Good evening and welcome to TL Physics and today I'm going to talk about fields and the rules between them. Now this video will be on the front of three playlists, so the magnetic fields, the electric fields and the gravitational fields. And the reason for this is because if you understand how fields work, you can understand how the rules can be applied for literally every single different type of field. Okay, so understanding how fields work and why they work is really important. So first of all, the definition of a field. A field is a region of space where an object with a certain property will feel a certain force. Okay, so for gravitational fields, that property is, of course, mass. So I'm just going to write that above it. So I'm going to go mass and m. Okay, for electric fields, it's charge. And I'm going to call that Q. And for magnetic fields, it is uh, moving charges. Okay, also known as I times L. So a charge mo current moving along a length. Okay, so what it means is that an object with a particular property would feel a force if it's in the correct field. So for example, take this pen. This pen is in a gravitational field. And when I let it go, it falls down. It feels a force of attraction towards the centre of the Earth. However, this pen does not have any charge. So if I put it in an electric field, it wouldn't move because it hasn't got the property of that field. So only if you have a property of that field do you feel the field's effect. Okay. And what I'm going to do now is I'm going to talk about the rules. And I'm actually going to apply them for each of the fields so that you can see the patterns. Okay, so the force in a linear, or in other words, it sometimes can be called, is a uniform field. And to explain what a uniform field is, a uniform field, okay, is one where the field strength is constant. And we would represent that, if I was going to draw the field lines for this diagram, okay, so a region of space where the field strength is constant, I would literally, so imagine this was the Earth. If I said that I was in a uniform gravitational field at the moment, I would draw lines like this, okay? They are equispaced apart, okay, so they're equal spacing apart. And um, you, as you can see here, um, which means that the uniform field strength is constant. There's no dipping, there's no closest, they're all equal spaced apart. I would also draw an arrow to show the direction of the field, because I know any object that I drop on the earth goes down. So this is the direction that mass would go. Okay, so in a uniform field, it's when the field strength is constant. Okay, so it doesn't matter where I am. Here on Mount Everest, I'm saying that on Earth, I have a uniform, radi a uniform field, okay? This is not true, but this is just me using this example because we do say 9.81 works from here to Mount Everest. Um, so using that idea that G is in a uniform field, so the field strength is constant. So the force in a uniform field is going to be, so F, equals the property of that field Oops. times by the field strength which makes sense if I have a stronger field I'm going to feel more force so we're going to do that for gravitational fields that's going to be force equals the property mass times g in an electric field the force is the property charge times by the field strength. The field strength in an electric field is represented by the letter E. And in moving charges, force equals the property of the field, which is IL, times by the magnetic field strength, which is known as B, which is measured in Teslas. You may have seen this formula if I write it in its normal format of F equals B. I, L, or F equals Bill. 
Now, I'm going to go to that's uniform. As you can see, they're very similar. The, the formulas have a very similar format to them. And it's actually really useful because if you understand the rules for uniform fields, you technically understand it for every single field, so magnetic, gravitational, and electric. So I'm going to now talk about radial fields. Okay, Oops. just going to wrap that off there. I'm going to talk about radial fields now. So a radial field... Okay, is one where field strength changes by the inverse square law. And if I actually draw that for you, if I draw a circle here and draw a field line, so this is actually more like what a gravitational field would look like around the Earth. Okay, so this is the Earth here. As you can see, these lines start close together but get further apart. So what happens is that the field strength here gets more spread out. Okay, again, I have arrows because that is the direction my test mass would fall, is inwards. But this is a radial field where basically it's going to be spread out. So it's going to be something to do with an inverse square law. Okay. So the equation for the force in this one, okay, is force equals a constant, okay, times by the properties, because we are talking about the interaction between two things, okay. Unlike the first one, where can you see this got field strength in it? So the field strength is in it, so I'm already taking in the earth into account. This one, I can't. <coughs> this is what the constant is doing. All over R squared. And this is why I mean that the force is proportional to the inverse square law here. So let me write it for this one. So for mass here, I've got F equals... Big G, Newton's uh, gravitational constant, M1, M2, over R squared. For electric fields, F equals 1 over 4 pi, epsilon naught, that's my constant, Q1, Q2, over R squared. And for AQA, you never need to know that. <coughs> <coughs> if it was going to exist, of course, it'd be F equals a constant, okay, I L times I to L to over R squared. But you never need to know that. And I don't know what the constant is, okay? So that one we don't need to know. But can you see how similar these formulae are? That constant times M1, M2 over R squared. Constant Q1, Q2 over R squared. Okay, now field strength, so field strength equals the force over the property. And hopefully you can see that if I have G is F over M, here E equals F over Q, and B equals F over I L. Again, force on the top, property of the material under the bottom. Okay. They like asking for what is the equation for field strength for magnetic fields. Now, potential, by the way, doesn't need to be dealt with for magnetic. Potential is something special about fields. <coughs> fields being a region of space where an object or a property will feel a force. Now, that force can be attractive or repulsive. So the field is going to try and pull it in, or the field is going to try to eject it. So at that point, that object may be given energy to leave the field, or you may have to actually put energy in to leave the field. Okay? And that is really important. Because when we're trying to work out potential, so you've heard of the word potential, potential, electric potential. 
gravitational potential. What I'm doing is at that point, I'm working out how much energy per unit of mass I have where they are in that field that I would actually, do I have to add energy to get them out or is the field going to do that for me? A good example is these two objects here. So I've got a box of pens and a pen. And they are in the same place of the field of Earth. So they're in the same place. So they have the same potential. However, the amount of energy that I require to get this one out of orbit, to leave the gravitation field, is going to be different from this one. So potential is a ratio between how much energy and the property of the field. Okay, so potential is using the letter V, all right? And if you want to, you can make it different by putting VG or VE, okay? So you've seen this probably for electric fields, you've seen voltage, potential, okay? Is energy or work done divided by the property? So for this one, potential of graph fields, okay, that is going to be energy over mass. The potential for electric field is the energy over charge. And you would have seen that one for electric potential. As you can see, one of the things that's really important is this idea of what potential is. And we'll be, I'll be talking about that individually within each um, video. But the thing that you need to be aware of is these similarities. That these rules follow all the way through, no matter what field you're looking in. The rules of field stand. That this stuff here, that the force in a linear or uniform field is the property times the field strength. That the force in a radial field is the constant times by the properties of two materials, okay, divided by R squared, it's an inverse square law. That the field strength is the force divided by the property of that field. And the potential of that field is the energy over that property. So it's the energy that I would be given by the field or I have to give in to take it out of the field divided by the property. And I've done it for all of these here. Understanding these relationships when we go into doing field work with magnetic, gravitational and electric will really assist you, especially when you go, oh, I did that in gravitational fields. I just do the same thing for electric fields. Okay. So that is fixed.